Today I want to talk a little bit about the fuel system diagram for the SR20. Uh, what we're going to do is we're going to start off with the basic diagram and then I'm going to add in a little bit of detail as we go along. So here we go. Uh, to begin with the fuel system we'll start off with the main tanks. We need a left left main and a right main tank. So there we go, we've got the left main tank, we've got the right main tank. These tanks are uh, fairly large. They hold 28 gallons usable uh, each. 28. So there you go. Each one of these tanks holds 28 usable gallons of fuel. The total fuel for the uh, SR20 is 56 uh, 56 gallons usable fuel and 60.5 gallons of total fuel. What that means is that there is uh, in each tank 2.25 gallons of unusable fuel which is kind of a lot. Uh, other airplanes have a bit less but that's not important um, the unusable fuel isn't really important. What is important is that we've got 56 gallons of usable fuel. Uh, in addition to the main tanks, we've also got collector tanks. Uh, there's one collector, there's another. Uh, that would be the left collector, this would be the right collector. Now the collector tanks have uh, a capacity of two-thirds of a gallon. Sometimes you'll see this written as 0 0.666666 forever or 0 0.667 gallons, uh, but the point of it is that it holds two-thirds of a gallon. Let me get rid of that because we're not really going to need it. Uh, following that, you've got the fuel selector. The fuel selector sits right in the middle and the various tanks connect up to it. We'll connect those up uh, actually right now. We might as well do it right now. The left main tank connects to the left collector tank. The left collector tank connects to the fuel selector. Same way with the right main. The right main connects to the right collector. The right conne collector connects to the fuel selector. So there you go. So the main tank, the collector tank, and then the fuel selector. From the fuel selector, fuel has to go somewhere, and in fact, oh, that was wrong, uh, where the fuel goes is to a boost pump. So you've got the boost pump here. After the boost pump, it flows to a gas -colator. From the gas -colator, it flows to an engine-driven fuel pump. engine driven fuel pump and then from there it flows to what's unknown either as a spider valve or more correctly an injection manifold so there you go you've got your spider valve or your injection manifold and we could probably put some labels on these so here we go got your boost pump here you've got your gascalator here. You've got your engine driven fuel pump here. And you've got your injector manifold here. So there you go. So the boost pump, the gas escalator, the engine driven fuel pump, and then the injection manifold, or the injector manifold. Uh, we're going to connect those up. So from the fuel selector, fuel flows to the boost pump. From the boost pump to the gas escalator. From the gas escalator to the engine driven fuel pump. And then from the engine driven fuel pump to the injector manifold. And from there it flows to each of the various cylinders. Kind of like that. So there you go. We're not quite done though, because there's also a fuel return line. 
Uh, the fuel return line flows from the engine driven fuel pump to the fuel selector. From the fuel selector, it then flows back to the right main, and it'll also flow, let's see if I can draw this properly, back to the left main. So again, you've got fuel flowing backwards in the system uh, back to the mains. The purpose of this is to return unused fuel from the engine driven fuel pump back to the selector, back to the main tank that it came from. Uh, this is because the engine driven fuel pump can move 125 to 150 percent of the fuel required by the engine and some of it needs to be returned otherwise it'll just be wasted. So it gets returned to the selector, from there it gets returned back to whichever main tank the selector happens to be on. So in this case let's say that the selector happens to be on the right tank well then fuel is going to return to the right main. If the selector happened to be on the left tank, then fuel would return to the left main tank. Uh, what we've also got is we've also got some air lines. And the reason for the air lines is because the tanks need to be vented to outside air, uh, otherwise they're in danger of getting vacuum lock. So, we've got a vent here, and we've got a vent here to the main tanks. The collector tanks also need to be vented, but luckily we can just vent them to the main tanks and that'll protect them equally well. So the main tanks are vented to outside air, the collector tank is vented to its own main tank. Uh, finally, we're going to need some fuel sumps and we can put those in. Uh, we've got a fuel sump here, we've got a fuel sump in the collector, a fuel sump in the right main, a fuel sump in the right collector, and we've also got a fuel sump on the gas collator. So there we go. Uh, sump, 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 and a sump there. Okay, so there's a total of five fuel sumps in the system, and this is actually pretty much a done deal right here. We've got a left main, a right main, they hold 28 gallons of usable fuel each, the totals for the system are 56 gallons of usable, 60.5 gallons of total gas. We've got a couple collector tanks. They hold two-thirds of a gallon each. We've got a fuel selector. We've got a boost pump, gas escalator, engine-driven fuel pump, and injector manifold. We've got a return line from the engine-driven fuel pump back to the selector. From the selector back to the main tanks, one on each. And that return line is chosen by which uh, side the fuel selector is currently pointed to. We've got five sumps, we've got two vents, and the uh, collector tanks themselves are also vented as well uh, using the main tanks as their ventilation source. And I think that's pretty much it.